Good afternoon. Today, I would like to tell you guys something about the ethical challenges we face when implementing machine learning algorithms. Or actually, I would like to tell you guys something about the ethical questions I have when doing so. But before looking into that, I figured it would be nice to first have a look at what machine learning actually is. So here goes. What we have here is nothing. <laughs> Let's see if we can get it back up. Ah, here it is. Cool, guys. Let's go. Uh, what we have here is a sequence, and we're looking for the fifth figure. Who knows the answer? Anyone? No one? Too bad, guys. Time's up. A computer would have solved this by now, by the way. The fourth answer was actually the right one. Now, how do we know this? We look at the historical data, and we look for a pattern. And based on that, we make a prediction. This is the exact same thing we're trying to teach machines. And when doing so, we speak of machine learning. Now, some of us might have struggled with the sequence we saw earlier. I know I did. And that is because our brains are able to analyze a couple of variables at the same time, three in this case. A computer, however, is able to analyze way more variables, way quicker than we do. And it uses algorithms to do so. Now, what again is an algorithm? Actually, an algorithm is nothing more than a fancy to-do list for a computer. It is a well-defined process that allows a computer to solve a complex problem. Apart from being able to analyze faster and better than we do, computers aren't biased the way we are. They don't have preconceived notions about what the outcome should be based on personal prejudices. Now, I'm a data analyst myself, and I know I have bias. I like to be proven right. So when I look into the data, I tend to look for confirmation of my own beliefs. Um, it is a bit like wanting to buy something, like shoes, for example. I look for good reasons to buy them, prove that the purchase is a good decision, and convince myself of something I already want. There's a saying in data analysis. When torturing the data long enough, it will admit to anything. So when looking for confirmation of your own beliefs, you are very likely to find that. Now, when leaving up analysis to machines, we make better, faster, and more objective predictions. And we're already using algorithms. We're using them in finance, in medicine, and in marketing already. Algorithms are already trading stocks for us, they're diagnosing illnesses early, and they're forecasting demand and supply. Now, that is really cool, right? There is just one catch. These machines still look at human behavior in order to learn. They look at the historical data we provide them with, our decisions, our purchases, our data sets, to find the patterns that they need. So these objective machines are now being fed with our often irrational decisions, our strange behavior, and our biased choices. These machines thus learn from us. We feed the machines. And I am not sure if that is a good thing. Because, like it or not, we live in a world that is full of inequality, a world that is racist and sexist at times, a world that is afraid of what is new or different or difficult, and our society doesn't reflect the way that we would like to be, it reflects the way that we are. And this means algorithms become prejudiced and segregated in exactly the same way our society is. And there are already some very embarrassing examples of that. For example, Google, Google image classification model, it mistakenly labeled black people to be gorillas. It was just meant to easily categorize your photos. But apparently this algorithm thought we have so many pictures of gorillas, we needed a separate folder for them. Or Microsoft's Twitter chatbot, Tay. It was designed for conversational understanding. 
After it started interacting with human Twitter users, it took them less than a day for it to start repeating the hateful sentiments that it learned. One of its first tweets was, hey, I'm stoked to meet you, humans are super cool. Only 15 hours later, Tay tweeted, I fucking hate feminists and they should all die and burn in hell. <laughs> but it gets worse. The US justice system introduced an algorithm to help judges make better rulings. Judges needed that help because whether they knew it or not, they have bias. For instance, in thinking that a man with a lot of tattoos is more likely to commit a crime, or that a black woman is more likely to steal again. And that is obviously not okay. The algorithm was trained with historical data, decisions of judges in earlier cases. So what happened, obviously, is that this algorithm started judging just as biased as the human judges did. We now have an algorithm that is proven to be racist and starting with the best intentions, it is locking up people that do not belong in prison. And that is awful. And we, at Debt, we're doing it too. We're also applying machine learning algorithms. But our data scientists, we're no evil geniuses. We're not planning to take over the world or put every member of a certain group behind bars. We're just a bunch of enthusiasts and we want to make online marketing better. We want to make better websites and more relevant ads. And we use data to do, to do so. We use it to make a website more relevant, so you don't have to search your way through endless menus and web shops to find what you're looking for. Because we know what that is. We trained a machine to predict that based on the hundreds of similar users before you. And we have that data. With over 2 billion Facebook users, 2.5 million Instagram photos, and 2.4 million uh, Google searches every hour, we know a lot about you. We can now assess almost all of your online behavior, your every click, your every search, your every purchase. That raises another question, though. How far can we go in using these insights? Well, let's find out. I want you to meet someone. This is Peter. And Peter is smiling someone in this picture, but he's probably not that happy anymore. Because he just Googled for information and unemployment allowance. He also bought some camping supplies online. For the holidays, he's been comparing at several websites. And we know that showing that these items were almost out of stock was what really motivated him to buy these camping supplies. Also, Peter Googled for what works best against a bloated feeling. We know that he bought quite some alcohol online up until some years ago, when he started Googling for ways to quit drinking. Let's play a game. If you could all please stand up. The following are all examples of what, I, what we can already do. I could set this up for any client tomorrow. Please remain standing if you feel that is okay. If you feel like, sure, set this up, that's no problem. But please sit down if you feel uncomfortable with the following. Can we show Peter more camping supplies? Because that's what he's been Googling for. Oh, we're all quite all right with that, perfect. Can we show Peter more products that are almost out of stock? Because that is what motivated him the last time as well. Ooh, already see some doubts here and there. Can we exclude Peter from our campaigns? Because he is sending back everything he ordered, and that is actually costing our clients money. Yeah, still fine here, still all in the game, cool. Can we show Peter more alcohol ads? Because with all the stress of losing his job, he might be more eager to relieve that stress. <laughs> See a lot of you guys are sitting down now. Maybe look around for who's still standing. Can we show Peter ads for a personal loan? Because now he lost his job and already booked his holidays. He could probably really use the money. Still in the game? Cool. Can we show Peter ads for one of our clients, a health insurance, for additional assurance, 
with dynamic higher prices because that bloated feeling might actually indicate something worse after years of drinking. Whoa. I see almost all of you are sitting down right now. Did you guys know that some of these examples are already happening? Let me be clear, there's no right and wrong in this, there's no good or bad. But I did notice that some of you guys uh, sit down while others remain standing. So that must mean you have a different perspective on things, right? So if we were all to apply machine learning algorithms anytime soon, we just might cross each other's moral lines, right? We've seen that even with the best intentions, algorithms do not eliminate human bias. And even if we were to create an unbiased algorithm, we should still discuss how to use this. And this is something we have to do ourselves. Because there are no rules yet, there's no guidebook, there's no Bible for this. Like I said, we have oceans of data already and the technology to use it. And I have doubts when using that data if what I'm doing is okay, if what we're doing as an industry is all right. I wonder if I'm not already crossing any lines. Is it okay for me to decide that someone I don't know is going to be confronted with their personal weaknesses? I like to think I'm kind of a good person, but would you let me take that decision for you? Because I already do. Now please, do me a favor and discuss within your companies, where do you draw the line? And join me in thinking about this. Let me know how you feel, because I really want to know. And I'll be out there by the bar. Please feel free to step, step by and let me know what you think. And who knows, maybe next year I'll stand there presenting an industry-wide code of conduct for applying machine learning algorithms. Thank you.